Hey everyone, this is Nikki and welcome to my channel. For those who are new here, I am a Toronto-based plant collector and I like propagating my plants. And if you're coming back, welcome again and I'm so glad that you're here with me as I talk about plants. So it's been quite a while. I mean, I did upload a video recently which was about the newly acquired Hoyas and well that was taken about three weeks ago as of today. Um, today is July 26th and um, the thing is I got so sick to the point that I lost my voice. I had a very very bad case of sore throat and I just couldn't speak. So I rested for a while and clearly I, I couldn't even bring myself to film anything. And even though that video existed already like a few weeks ago because I filmed that a long time ago. <laughs> Um, I only had the energy to actually edit um, last week so yeah that's what happened and now that I'm filming again myself it feels like I don't know what I'm actually doing <laughs> so forgive me if I'm going to be very awkward again but I think at this point you guys are so used to it already <laughs> so yeah um, today I will be doing some plant chores. Honestly, it's kind of like major. I will be watering all of my plants here in the living room, which is basically where my cabinets are at and in the plant room as well. So I'm probably going to give you guys a little tour of the plant room. And then at the same time, I'll just bring you guys with me as I water everything. Um, I think mostly the plants on this cabinet, the anthuriums and alocasias, my Hoyas are doing good so far. Um, they, some of them I can see that they still have water. And I don't know, but I'm probably going to... Here we go. <laughs> I'm probably going to chop my Hoyas again. But this time, I'm going to chop the Hoyas that you guys are not expecting me to chop, which are my small leafer Hoyas. And I know I already expressed that I really like them and I would love to keep them all to myself. <laughs> but of course, a way to encourage fuller growth is to chop them. And at the same time, um, since it's growing season, I do know that when I chop them, they would grow so fast. Um, I think I'm going to share the cuttings to those uh, buyers from our website. It's going to be an exclusive sale. So anyone who have purchased previously on our website will receive a password soon so that they could access the exclusive grand sale, whatever we should call that. And I don't know, I'm going to ask the vendors of the prop studio to do the same or something. Just, you know, a big blowout for our supporters and those people who have been buying from us. Not only plants, but for some people, um, they kind of told me that our shop has been their go-to already when it comes to plant essentials like the pods, potting media, um, trellis, accessories, clips, whatever. It's kind of really heartwarming to hear that and because of that I really wanted to work harder. I want to be able to bring more supplies to people around us so I don't know there's just so much going on behind the scenes that you guys don't know but maybe if I get to be more comfortable and when I feel like I'm getting more organized I would be able to share those things to you guys especially on the business side but for now I mean you know on top of being sick um being very busy as a mom and I still go to work although I work from home but I still work and I do run other online shops um, I'm probably going to mention them eventually but yeah, I do a lot of things and sometimes it gets overwhelming for me. But the reason why I'm still here, the reason why I'm doing this YouTube and plant thing, it's because it makes me happy. And at the same time, I wanted to share everything to you guys. Just so, you know, it's like, I don't know, sharing this hobby with like-minded people um, makes it more exciting. I don't know if that makes sense. I like seeing your comments, um, meeting new people because of this platform or... Um, receiving messages about my plants, asking me what I do with them or how do I do this and that. And then we just, you know, the conversation just starts from there and I really enjoy it. So I keep on blabbing. <laughs> so yeah, again, 
I'm just going to do some plant chores and at the same time I'm going to give you guys a tour of the plant room which is still messy. So let's do that. Okay, so this is the plant room right now, but I think we should first go on to this side, which is, um, you can see my computer in here. Um, it's kind of messy because I'm basically in the middle of doing some things. Um, I'm updating the website and I'm basically trying to gather the orders that I'm about to ship next week, whatever. And I'm also contemplating on adding, I told you guys that I do have other shops and I make this handmade um, accessories. Um, so most of my designs are kind of like fan themed. This is one of them. It's a uh, dangling earrings, a pair of dangling earrings. And I also have this, they are stud earrings. I feel like I should add them at the prop studio. Basically consider um, the Artelier, which is my shop, um, as a vendor. <laughs> so one of my vendors is myself. <laughs> so yeah, I'm contemplating if I should add them. Um, I do have a bunch of uh, other plant-related designs over there. And so yeah, messy computer setup. And then over here, I do have the photo box. That's where I take photos of the plants for sale. Um, again, very messy. I just <laughs> took photos uh, yesterday. Oh, no, two days ago, I think. So, yeah. And over here, you have my printer. This is where I print things sometimes. <laughs> In this cabinet, um, this is where my nutrients are. So, I'm using different things, a lot of things. I'm using this right now, the this trio, but I'm just basically finishing it off. Um, it's too much work, you know, mixing the three of them. I like using foliage focus better because you don't need to mix them unlike this. But yeah, but on top of that, I do have a lot of add-ons like, you know, um, Cali Magic, Diamond Nectar. I do have Rapid Start. I use HydroGuard, I use Silica Blast, and I use Great White. So many things, but it's not worth it. I would say it's worth it. My plants like them. Maybe next time I would create a video um, including or showing you guys how I actually mix my nutrient solution. But it depends because like I said, I'm going to finish this off. I won't be using it anymore. This gamer, it's very good. I like it, but it's too much work for me. But at the same time, I, I was able to test foliage focus already and it works the same. My plants like them both. So I would rather go with one that's easier. <laughs> that's the only reason why I'm choosing it. So yeah, I, I also have a few, um, you know, um, and all insecticide, whatever, in here, just because, in case. And also below, <laughs> I do have some of the cups. I use this mostly to secure um, plants during shipments. So, you know, just the messy stuff, trying to hide them in cabinets. Um, at the bottom, you'll see some papers, basically the ones that I use to print shipping uh, things. So yeah, this is what this cabinet is for. Just to make things look nicer, pretend everything's organized. Um, this shelf currently has my taller plants, mostly alocasias because I like my alocasias big. So yeah, I don't think I'll be putting them back into the cabinet anymore because they don't fit in there. Supposedly, um, one, two, three, four of them are supposed to be in there, but maybe not anymore. They're doing fine here anyways. I'm going to grab the plan so that I could show it to you guys. Um, over here, this is a big one. Um, this is my, uh, alocasia lucky one. I believe it's a hybrid. Um, this is one of my biggest alocasias and I really love it. It's one of my favorites. 
and it's just there. I feel like it's very much underrated because the hype right now is with variegated allocations. But you know what? Prior to getting involved with variegated allocations, I already liked the original forms, the green forms, because it reminds me of home. There's so much allocations in the Philippines. That's all I can say. Like they grow everywhere in the streets, on vacant lots, or whatever. And they grow happily in there, so they're everywhere. And yeah, I just like seeing them. So this is my alocasia looky one. This one is my alocasia fornicata. Right now it's in the medium self watering pot, but as you can see, it needs a repot to the bigger one. <laughs> like I need to make sure this is potted, although it's okay. It works, but if I want to activate those growth points, I need to do something. Like I could wrap moss around it, but you know what? I'd rather repot because honestly, this is so small. Um, so it's currently in the aloe mix. Um, that's my magic mix for alocasia, and it's honestly the reason why my alocasias are big. So yeah, it's available at the prop studio in case. This one is from Tiana. She gave it to me because she um, she knew how sad I was when mine eventually crashed. And so many things have happened to my mother plant, my mother Cupria. It's because um, the past few months it's been flowering so much. So it started growing smaller leaves instead of getting big because um, it's huge. It's huge. But then, yeah, it started flowering, and then after that, it had spider mites. So, instead of saving it, I was like, you know what, I give up, but I'm sad. <laughs> so, she gave me her mother plant, and now, um, this is the first new leaf on me, and it's actually um, getting close to the size of my mother plant. Like, maybe one or two more leaves, it would be as big as that. So, yeah, it's really nice and I'm really grateful. Like, where can you find a friend who would give you her mother plant? This one over here is my alocasia mellow. Um, this has been giving me random sport variegation on random leaves, but um, maybe they don't. Maybe I got rid of the leaves already. I don't know. But anyways, so... This is one of my biggest allocations, but I really love it for its texture. I do have the variegated one, but it died because I got it right before I left. I went to travel for Florida and I was gone for so long. It dried up. I went to ashes. <laughs> so, and back then it was so expensive. You know what? I just don't want to buy it anymore. I just don't. I have so many plant cash roll keys. And this one, I have so many babies inside the pot, but I don't even want to grab them anymore. Again, this one is in the aloe mix, as you guys can see. Um, the aloe mix works in soft watering and also in um, normal pot setup like this. But this one, I'm using the aerated pots that's available at the prop studio. It has many holes, not only at the bottom, but also on the corners here. I don't know if you guys can see, but there are holes in there. So basically, it's good for plants that needs a lot of aeration. So yeah, allocation mellow, very big. I love the texture. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's really nice. I do have a baby mellow in here. I believe I got it from a trade. So like, even though I already have it, uh, have it mellow, but because this person who did a trade with me um, wanted my mother plant um, Hoyas, when she sent me a list and photos of her allocations, I already have them, but I don't mind getting another just for the sake of the trade so here's another mellow it's a baby and i honestly don't mind i like them also from the same trade this is the alocasia bat wing and i really love this one i killed mine <laughs> i 
I killed one. Uh, I killed the one that I already had before. It was so huge, and I kind of like um, neglected it. It's on me. The thing is, because some of my allocations were big, I've been putting them somewhere that I couldn't see them that much anymore. So that's what happens, and that's how I end up neglecting them. Although I didn't mean for it to happen, but yeah, I think this setup is so much better now compared to before where I just put them on top of my mills bow on top of shelves that I couldn't reach or on top of shelves that doesn't have light I don't I don't know this one over here is one of the most controversial alcaceus that I have I have a very bad experience no I have very bad experiences <laughs> with S <laughs> Uh, with this plant. Um, I don't want to share the entire details anymore. Maybe you can DM me, but let's just say I lost so much money um, with this plant because of a very bad transaction. <laughs> but it is what it is. Life happens and I just don't, you know, the people who joined me on that group order um, I don't want them to lose their money. I'd rather become responsible for it even though the seller did not really help me in any way but yeah um so because of that experience um i didn't want this plant anymore but something all also happened somebody offered um to give me corms but at the same time i think they posted it for sale and somebody bought them, so they took it back from me. I, I don't know the entire thing anymore. And honestly, um, I didn't take it seriously. I'm fine. I don't know. I have mixed feelings towards that experience. It's kind of funny. But then this one seller um, who became a friend because she knew everything that happened um, with my situation um, with this plant so she just suddenly messaged me and asked me if i still want it because she wants to give it to me and honestly i wouldn't say no right it's just really nice that somebody actually offered <laughs> a gift but yeah now i have so much story to say about this plan whenever someone comes over and you know takes a look at it and then ask that hey is that the alcasia venom and stuff but i'm really happy i'm really grateful that somebody is still nice enough to actually share their plan i don't know how i would make it up to that person because that person has everything like what what can i give you like but if they come to toronto i got them like i'll just let my husband cook food for them <laughs> not an alcasia but i have my mykins my mint mykins in here I'm hoping this would grow um, full. I like my Mykins full, but I'm also hesitant to chop it. I have a bad history with Mykins for some reason. Like they just revert when when they when they get chopped. So I don't know. This one is my current um, Dragon's Breath mother plant. I have a very very big Dragon's Breath mother plant before. It's basically twice the size of this, but back then I only had the cabinet and somebody mentioned that they want a big dragon spread. So I was like, you know what, you can take mine. I'm growing so many babies and because of that, um, I kept one of the babies for myself. I removed it on the website. It was supposed to be for sale. I removed it and kept it for myself and got rid of the mother plant. I sold it to that person who wanted it. And then that one baby that was with me died, <laughs> melted. <laughs> so I was left with nothing. And then Kiana, next foliage, gave me a baby again. Yeah, Tiana's always saving me. So this is just a regular dra dragon's breath, not not really variegated or whatever. But like I said, I really like alocasia, not because of the hype. I like it because of many other reasons. So now I, I have a mother plant again that's big, but also I'm still keeping this. Not only because I learned to get yourself a backup, but also this is from Tiana and it's special to me. So yeah, 
I now have two dragon's breath that I'm growing. So yeah, it's also in the aloe mix. It's well rooted. I don't know how many times I've sold scalp room this big already. And then I just keep on growing the baby to be mine. And then once it reach a particular size, I'd sell it again. I have corms growing somewhere and then it's going to be mine again. It's a cycle with scalp room, mostly because I'm scared to keep one that's gonna get so big. <laughs> so I keep them this size and then I'd sell them eventually and then I'll have another baby there growing somewhere. Um, yeah, so I would say scalp room never stay long with me. <laughs> they just keep on growing and then I would get rid of them and then I'm going to grow another. It's a cycle. But I love this. I love this plant. I love the variegated one. I had them in PC, tissue culture, and they melted. I had the Albo and the Aurea. So you know what? Never mind. I'm happy with the green form. This is my Philodendron um, Ring of Fire. Um, this is definitely one of my biggest plants and it was bigger in size before, like um, maybe double the size. I chopped it and then I kept a part of the top cutting to myself and this is it now. So I sold the bigger part which was the bottom cut. The person who got it was very happy because it's very big and the variegation is really nice. It's so splashy. Like look at that. I don't know if you guys can see that. One of my favorite philodendrons and now that I now that I think of it, I don't think I have a philodendron um, vigil just yet. Maybe I would do one. But yeah, so that's it for this shelf. And then the next few shelves that we're going to check out are the shelves where I keep the plants for sale. Well, we don't really have to open each of the bins over here, but you guys, you guys just need to know what's going on in here. These are my baby allocations. I'm growing them, mostly forms and tissue culture, whatever. But these are the ones that are not yet ready for the cabinet. Same, um, some are for recovery. As you guys can see, some of them were already in the cabinet before, but now they're back here. And I just threw in a bunch of um, tangiculas to get rid of the gnats. <laughs> So yeah, um, and then over here I do have my platies, but I'm going to mount them real soon. So you just stay there. Some of my ferns, um, a very random variegated anthurium. You guys have seen this already on my anthurium video, but I'm just keeping it here because why not? I also have some props of Halo. Mykins Halo, so I'm growing them. This is from Vincent. The ferns that I have, this is like one of my most interesting ferns. There, the blue ant fern. So it's just here. Props, Hoya props, and then my begonias at the bottom. You, you guys don't have to see them right now, but just know that this shelf are mostly my plants. Begonias at the back, begonias here, orchids, mini orchids, I'm still acclimating, whatever. Need some mounting, still mine. <laughs> and then over here, um, on the next, on this side. There you go. Wait, on this side. Um, so over here, we just have very random, um, propagations of philodendrons and some Hoya mother plants. Um, they're a mix of mine and for trade for sale. It doesn't matter. I'd still say it's kind of messy in here, but that's the best thing I could do for now. And these are my begonia props at the bottom, both of them. So begonia is ready for sale. That's why they're in this packaging. Like, I know you guys have seen me prop them. And yeah, that's how they look like. They're ready for sale. I like propping them straight into these cups. Um, let me show you. Look how rooted it is. 
Wait, you guys can see. I don't know if you could, but wait. There, look at the roots. So I'm using my begonia mix for this, and my begonia mix is very good in rooting begonias. <laughs> Um, most of the mix that I made, um, I made sure that they're very good for rooting props because you guys already know that I'm addicted to propagating plants. So yeah, these are my Ragonia bins. The reason why I don't have lights on them right now is because they faded. <laughs> I exposed them to too much lights or I think it was the duration. Um, I extended the hours of my lights, so that's what happened. So now I'm trying to give them less light so that their colors would come back um this one over here at the top we have some plants for sale more plants for sale uh alocasia and then anthuriums you guys don't have to see them but they're the plants that are in the prop studio website and then over here these are mine <laughs> these are my variegated uh african violets i know i could have arranged them more organized like maybe this shelf is mine like maybe on one shelf would be all of my plants and then other shelves would be the plants for sale but the thing is let's say for this one i like seeing my african violets on this level because they're so pretty <laughs> so that's the reason why they're on this shelf like i mean look at that it's just so pretty i don't know about you guys it is pretty, so wouldn't you like to see that like regularly? So that's why it's on this level. And then plants at the bottom again, they are the plants for sale. I'm growing them, they are my propagations. And same on this last shelf, I would say, oh my God, this is so funny. Okay, so here on the last shelf, um, a mix my plants i just know it you know um this one is from kitty <laughs> this is a very funny fern um the golden chicken fern i think i don't know i'm just <laughs> it's like i have a pet in here theo likes touching this one i think he thought it's a duck or something but yeah i'm waiting for it to grow I put it in this cute planner that my sister-in-law gave me last Christmas. So it's staying here. Um, some seeds from the urban foliage that uh, we bought together, my friends and I bought together. So I separated and I'm ready to give it to them. I'm the spot. <laughs> this place is the spot for my friends to meet up. So everyone brings the plant that they want to give to the others, you know, if you get what I mean, like this ones are from Tiana. She dropped it off yesterday and she wanted me to hand it to David and to ship this to Kitty because I'm shipping a bunch of Hoyas to Kitty. So yeah, they're just there. These are all Hoya bins and they are the ones that are for sale at the prop studio. And then I have some African violet props over here. So last would be um, some anthuriums that I'm growing for myself. I only have one bin left. All of my anthuriums have been responsibly potted and now they're in the cabinets. So yeah. So now that we're done here in the plant room, well, not entirely, um, you need to see what's up there. Um, let me do it this way. Huh. You need to see what's on top of the shelves. But I only have a few in here because I recently changed the layout of this plant room, right? So I do have <laughs> some of the pots up there. Only the square and some self-watering pots. These are the best sellers. I do have some of the round pots somewhere in this place, but yeah. So that's my entire plant room. Um, anything that I missed? Oh, I think you guys should know that at the bottom of each shelves are bins, black bins. And that's where my potting media are hiding, you know, just to be away from plain sight. 
And this, what you're seeing in here is, um, what you're seeing over here is my nutrient solution. And like I said, I'm going to be watering the plants and the cabinet and here. Okay, so that's it for the plant room. And I know it's not that much, it's, it's not that big. And there's not really a lot of plants in here. But they are my babies and I'm happy. And these are the plants that I share with people. So I'm really happy seeing them grow. Like from cuttings without roots. And then I grow them, have roots. And they start to produce growth points, whatever. And I just like watching them. I like watching the process. I enjoy it so much. So I figured an open shelf setup like this would work better for me instead of having a tent or something that's closed and I couldn't see them. I don't really enjoy it. So that's why I got rid of the tent and now I'm happy with this space. And eventually I hope we'd get there, you know, um, more clean and more organized. But it is what it is. I do things every day. There are orders coming in every day and although I have a shipping schedule, packing schedule, but honestly sometimes when you see the numbers of orders, which is I'm really grateful for, um, when you see it coming in and you don't want to overwhelm yourself so you just do it in advance and you know just so that I'd have less work during that day I might as well do it now if I'm not doing anything. So by the end of the day basically I, I am doing something <laughs> so yeah i'll be taking you guys with me again outside i'll just bring out this nutrient solution first it's heavy i couldn't i don't know how to go out with it and then the tripod so yeah i'll do that first and i'll see you guys <laughs> i'm so awkward anyways yeah hey guys so i'm back and um i know i look like a mess but <laughs> After I told you guys that I'll be bringing the water with nutrients outside here in the living room and then I'd go through the plants for my plant chores, um, I actually remembered I have to go to my doctor, my chiropractor. And then after that, my husband picked me up, we went to the groceries and then we also went to the gym. And now it's basically 2.30. <laughs> so that was like um, three hours ago. I was gone for three hours. But here I am, and as promised, I'm going to continue with my plan chores because if I do not do this today, I won't be able to do it the next few days because it's the weekend and Theo's going to be here. And if I open the cabinets and water things, he would just grab the plants. <laughs> so um, I'm trying to figure out my angle in here. Um, so we're going to water three cabinets. This two mills bows and then this fabric core and well maybe also the third mills bow which has the Hoyas. I don't know, but priority is the allocations and anthuriums. So I'm going to figure out the angle. This is my first time doing this kind of setup where I'm basically showing you guys what I'm doing. And I don't know. Um but yeah, I already have my nutrients with me it's down here you guys don't see it but we'll start watering okay so i guess this angle is fine um what's important is that you guys can see the plants as i grab them and just you know put water on their pots of course while i do this um i usually do this lately once per week it used to be like once every two weeks but since it's summer the plants are extra thirsty so now I'm doing it every week and whenever I do this, this is also my chance to check on the plant itself, like each leaves, under the leaves, the stems, whatever, if there are pests. Because as you guys know already, um, this season, especially summer, um, pests just, you know, they come out and they sometimes they want to party all over your plants. But as you guys can see, I do have this... Um, uh sachets of um is that what you call them i don't know um this bags tiny bags of uh beneficial mites predatory mites i use copper and um my shop the prop studio we do pre-order um for the beneficial mites um depending on the dates that we plan to do it so basically 
I order a lot for myself because I use it for maintenance on my personal plans and my plans for sale. And then at the same time, my other friends, they also do it for their plans. It's the best uh, way to prevent pests on your collection. Best maintenance, I would say. So we always do this. We always do pre-orders and mostly it's for our personal use but of course if other people um like our regular buyers those who are close by who could pick them up because we don't want to ship them um those who wants to pick them up here in my place they can do it and yeah you just basically have to wait for an announcement on uh the website at the prop studio or on the instagram account and sometimes i repost it on my main instagram account for my plans which is sneaky plans so yeah all of my pots have this. Um, they are there are two types that I use. Um, one is the Swirsky, and then the other one is the Spyco Ultimite, which is the best for spider mites. And this one is best for the other types of pests. But again, it's just for prevention. So, yeah, I'll start watering them and then just checking them out. Some of my plants here that you would see, um, maybe they need pruning or like I, I, I get rid of the bad leaves that are about to um, drop or whatever. But if it's still okay, then I leave them be. I'll start now and yeah. Bambino, a baby bambino. Gotta check the roots coming out, but doesn't need a repot yet. You go one down. I've checked for past. Good. For now, I'll put them here on top of the millspo just because. I'll just put it back later, you know. So, hmm, look at the roots. Wow. This is my Adora, the tea. Uh, this is the mint variegation. Oh, there's a new leaf. This is my um, Watsoniana Aurea. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's Aurea. <laughs> Look at the roots. I like what I'm seeing. To think that I recently have, you know, alocasias that melted and stuff like that. Most of them. This is one of them, but look at now it's uh it bounced back with two beautiful leaves. Third one on the way, and then babies. I don't even wanna oops, I don't wanna remove the babies anymore. So they're just there. I don't wanna separate them anymore there and I'm sure there's more oh look at the roots so mm, basically that's what the aloe mix has been doing to my alocasias and not only mine I've seen the alocasias of my buyers and my friends those people who trusted the aloe mix like it's been insane Okay, so this one, I could put it back and then just put back a, a swear ski or a uh, beneficial something. Okay, try to put it back where they were. Okay. Okay, so this is my Amazonica, um, splash, tricolor, whatever, um, 
Okay, it's doing fine and it's working on a new leaf. I mean, there's a new leaf on the way. There. It's really nice. <laughs> this is my nobilis. Um, it went through a bad situation. It melted and stuff. So now it's a one leafer. But so happy to say that it's been rooting well and there are a lot of corms. Last time I checked, there were like five, and then now the roots are very good. So. We keep them here. Okay. This is my, ooh. Some of them needs like a top up of the Amija. This is my Wong Yiloba. Wong Jiloba, oops. Albo. And it's working on a new leaf there. And it's looking so nice. I'm excited to see it. This plant gets so big. Really, really big. Um, this is a baby of my mother plant that I already got rid of because of the size. But you know what? I'm ready for bigger alocasias now. You guys already know that obviously I have big plants before and then I just got rid of them because people are attracted and uh, you know what? Each time it happens, I just grab the opportunity when someone expressed that they, they like the big plants that I have. And I'm like, yeah, take it. Go ahead. Okay, so this is my uh, bigger bambino and it's been acting up because uh, once upon a time it gave me a bunch of inflows and then I took a lot of corms, separated a lot of babies, which the first bambino is one of them. And then it started showing less variegation, which is weird. The babies uh, that are with my other friends, they are really nice. So. For this one, I'm gonna get rid of this. I think I can easily pull it there. Yeah, that's it. And should go back. It's working on a new leaf, so I'm okay with that. Last one from the back is the oh Regal Shield Albo, which is just a GIF. From a friend, and yeah. If you think about it, like, I feel like I've lost so many plants, particularly um, with alocasias because of the corms and just how dramatic they could be. And when I say I lost, it's not only the like the fact that it died or and uh, like in terms of quantity, I lost a lot of money. <laughs> I killed a bunch of uh, alocasias that are quite expensive. So sometimes I just, you know, Try to talk myself out of the misery, like, I don't know. It makes me so sad that I lost so many alocasias, but I'm still here, still with them. Um, this is one of my black velvets. It's a baby of my mother plant, but it's already a mother plant as well now. Look at that. It's working on a new leaf, and then there are many, many, many corms inside. But I haven't, you know, I, I don't really want to dig for corms anymore. I just let them grow and when they're stable, I separate them. I just let them be to be honest. Like once upon a time, I used to dig for corms so much. I'm always excited when there are corms. This is um my Cupria. Again, it's one of those that melted, but it gave me this new leaf already and it's working on a new one. So not entirely complaining. This plant has been through so much. I think I already mentioned that, so. There. 
This one over here is my Bambino Gold, which is basically Aurea, but um, it's kind of slow right now. Oh, but look at that. It's well rooted. Um, okay, that's funny. I don't know why I did this, but it's in aloe mix at the bottom, and then I topped up with Fuvel. I don't know why. Don't ask me. <laughs> Maybe because it looked nice? I don't know. But that's good to know. Yeah, this plant is already in uh, aloe mix. Honestly, now that I think of it, maybe some of my plants that are in Fluval is actually an aloe mix. <laughs> so this is my Dragon Scale Mint. And it's really a stunning specimen. It's not the same as the other mints that I've seen. Like, just like how speckly it is and it's so nice. Um, this one had an offshoot and I gave it to David, my friend. Um, so far, it's still alive with him. I'm glad. <laughs> oh. So, let's put back all of those um, beneficials. Okay, now we move on here. This is my another long loba. But this is the Orion one. And this is from Tiana. Flex foliage. Um... I do know that there are corms inside already and that it's rooting very well and it's big. I remember um, when I repotted this um, because it melted and I was basically starting from uh, like a new growth, a new leaf. So I underestimated it. I put it in a small self-watering pot. I repotted it just like few days ago. This is my Yucatan princess. Um, this is the original Yucatan princess. Should be pink variegation, but I only have two leaves now because of what happened. But recovering, recovering, so many roots. This one is also a corn maker. This is a baby of my mother plant and my mother plant is now gone. We have over here is the serendipity. It's also a one leaf for now. Because it also melted. Of all my acacias, this is the one that melts all the time because it keeps giving me full pink or half moon like this. So it is what it is. <laughs> but I'm okay with that, honestly. I'm fine. This is my Sabrina, Alocasia Sabrina. So narrow. Um, also melted. But should be fine. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I don't know what you think of my ways of watering. Um, some could say that this is taking so much time or whatever. But for me, I kind of enjoy the process because most of the time, like this is the first time that I'm doing this while talking. But most of the time I just play, you know, my favorite playlist, um, my, favorite, my favorite music, whatever. And I just vibe with it and then... Yeah, I, I take care of my plants, I do all of these chores, and it's actually very relaxing for me, so, yeah. Plants at the bottom, um, we only have four, because I was cleaning and monitoring uh, this shelf for past so far, um, they're good. Because they're the bigger plants, um, this is my Amazonica, it's supposed to be pink, but it's not doing its thing now, so... I actually want another Amazonica, one that's kind of like really pink, but I couldn't find anywhere just yet. All I've been seeing are the mint ones. I don't know, they call it ghost, they call it mint. I honestly don't know anymore. Like, I have nothing against Disher culture. Honestly, I like them because it's a way for us to get th this amazing plants for cheaper but sometimes depending on the sellers especially the ones selling from asia like basically they are the exporters i hate it when they just make up things just for the sake of selling them so sometimes when they call it mint or ghost like i don't even know what to believe anymore 
they just want to make up different variegation names sometimes. Um, so this is my Alocasia uh, Punkak Brunello. It's a big plant. It's a tall plant. And it's well-rooted. Ooh, I'm seeing corms that are growing. Oh my. Well, again, I'll just let it be. Because I don't want to separate corms anymore. I don't think I've shared it yet, but if you guys remember the last time that I rescued my alocasias that melted during the uh, heat wave and the neglect, um, I showed you guys that I kind of harvested some corms for my from my silver dragon tricolor, and that one is very very nice. It's a nice specimen, very highly variegated. A lot of people want that, and I think I harvested five corms. I don't remember, but. I forgot where I put those corms. If anything, I probably threw them away. So, <laughs> my friends are so disappointed <laughs> because they really want that plant. This is my um, Cuculata mint. It's also one of my biggest plants. And it has babies <laughs> there. Uh, this baby is throwing. Half moons, and then there's another one, but as usual, my usual now is not touching them. I just let them go with the mother plant, pull them if it's necessary, but for now, not really, I don't think so. Then the last allocation from this cabinet is my Nairobi Knight. Nairobi Knight's gold, and it's actually a big plant. I'm trying to show the full thing. Yeah, so I believe that all of the Oria, um, when they are really highly variegated, that's the time they call it gold. And this is one of them. <laughs> so it's it's basically just an Oria for all I know. I'll be honest about that. I won't fool you guys. It's an Oria, but maybe the seller labeled it gold because, well, I can see why. It's not just, you know, basic Oria, it's literally gold. <laughs> because the colors are very um, highly, highly, highly variegated. And I'm not complaining. I actually love it. Yeah. And it's big. And I have one, two, three corms on top. More at the bottom, like, look at those roots. Thank you, Aloe Mix. So, yeah, and it's working on a new one, and I'm sure it's going to be big, just like, look at that. So, now, we're done with this cabinet, and we're going to move on to the other one, which has different variety of plants. Okay, so now we're here at the middle millspo, and some of them have been watered just recently. Mostly because I kind of chopped some of them. <laughs> I'll show you guys some, which are like, um, this is my variegated tetrasperma. And the variegation is called um, White Tears. I haven't seen anyone in Canada with this just yet. And it's very nice. And it's very expensive. <laughs> and this is the bottom cut. So I'm going to grow it. I'm assuming that it's going to have multiple growth points. If I like it, I'm going to combine them back together so that I would have a full pot. But if not, I don't know. I could chop it more so that I could share it with others. So I'm just growing it here. I usually put the plants that I chop inside bins so that I could give it a very high humidity and would encourage, you know, new growth. But right now, my cabinets are very high on humidity. I think they're between 80 to 95, so they're fine here. I mean, just look at this. Um, so it's freshly chopped about four days ago, I would say. I chopped it when I saw the latest leaf fully um, unfurled. 
And now it's already working on a new one. It's as if I didn't chop it. So now I'm not I'm not worried about this anymore. Usually when I chop a new plant, I I get worried that maybe it would act up or they would be sad that I chopped them, but this one, no dramas at all. I also have um this is my I don't know how many variegated tetras from I already had. I, I've always been buying uh one leaf cutting with no guarantee of variegation on the new growth and I learned it the hard way that it's very unstable <laughs> so I got lucky with this one because the variegation as you guys can see is somehow half moon and it's been really consistent like one two three four five we have five leaves that are half moon and this is like the sixth one I'm impressed <laughs> And I like it. I'm keeping it this way. I'll just continue to grow it. I'm not going to chop it because I already know that if I do, things would change. This is the mother leaf. It's not even that half moon. But I got lucky with the growth point or whatever. So I'll just keep on growing it like this. No chopping. <laughs> Okay, so those plants, I already watered this just a few days ago. And then um, this is my variegated oxalis from Vincent. By the way, I think there's a noise, but it's okay. Um, my husband's cooking right now. <laughs> yeah, so this is my variegated oxalis. I know I showed you guys this plant when I got it, when I acquired it. It had three leaves. They are leaves, right? They look like flowers, but yeah, they are leaves. So they got three leaves when they arrived from Vancouver. Kitty brought it. But those leaves, um, they already were like, I don't know. They were sad. So I got rid of them. This all four leaves are new and they grew with me since then. I remember I snapped one or two. <laughs> but yeah, and there are more growing. I can see it. I just covered it with, uh, because I'm using my begonia mix on this one, but I covered the top with a mix of uh, moss and charcoal. I don't even remember anymore why I did that, but it looks nice anyways. And I also just refilled the pot, so no need to water. I did that when I retrellised my... Colopia multiflora. Um, this one has been vining everywhere until now. <laughs> but it was worse a few weeks ago. It was vining all over my cabinet. So I kind of retrellised it there. I don't know if you guys can see it. I don't know if you guys could appreciate it. But it's been growing really massive leaves. Like supposedly I mean not supposedly but usually the size of the leaves are like this that's the normal size that I know but this summer it started growing things like this bigger definitely bigger I would say it's like double in size like would you look at that comparison right so yeah this is my mother plant and I've been just chopping it and chopping it and chopping it non-stop like this vine I'm going to chop it today because it's fully variegated and I don't need that. It's just going to cause a lot of mess inside my cabinet. And honestly, I'm just done cleaning up its mess. <laughs> it's kind of leggy on the other parts. Um, I think it's mostly because it's where I chopped from before. But I don't really mind. Um, I, I'm pretty sure this plant will just keep on growing like this. Like this, this wasn't here when I trellised it like a few days ago. So yeah, I just let it be, except for vines like this, like it's useless. So might as well chop. So it doesn't help. Like I know I already expressed how invasive this plant is and that it's been vining literally everywhere in this cabinet, but it also doesn't help that the other plants in this cabinet are going wild. Like this. This is my Dyskidia. Um, 
I forgot, but it's the million horns. <laughs> I think it's the Rusifolia. So it's going crazy, I would say, and it's so dry. Me too. And the water. I only refill the pot every two weeks. Because um, even though they're thirstier than usual, my plants in general, um, the Skiria and Hoya are, I would say, more drought tolerant. Like, they can last for a while even without water. So, yeah. But I try and not to, like, you know, neglect them just because I'm confident that they're okay. So, yeah, it's staying there. But it's going wild, like I said. And then on the corner over here, I also have another Diskidia. And this is the... You know what, I'll just put the name on the screen. <laughs> because I'm not sure. <laughs> They're all growing so much. Honestly, I'm, I'm considering chopping them. But I don't know if people likes them. I'm not sure if people likes them, so... I might just share it with my friends. So those are the plants over here. I'm going to reach for the plants at the bottom, but I don't... Oh, we have one more. How come I didn't see this? It's so big. <laughs> okay, so this is another Diskidia. Okay, now I realize this shelf indeed is uh, full of <laughs> very invasive plants. And very full plants. <laughs> 